Yali Malef, and welcome to this edition of Healthy Bites. My name is Dr. Aldon Nathur, and I'm a general practitioner and the chairperson of the Health Advisory Committee on the Aga Khan Health Board here in the UK. Our topic today involves the COVID-19 pandemic and the evidence that people with Black, Asian, and minority ethnic backgrounds are being disproportionately affected by the pandemic and the role that diabetes plays in this and what we can do to reduce our risk. We will also be introducing our diabetes support group, which will be starting soon. Today, I am joined by Dr. Hannah Kassam, a GP and member of the Non-Communicable Diseases Portfolio on the AKHB, and Kamuni Saiba of Milton Keynes, Jamal Khanna, Munira Kimani, a diabetes specialist nurse. Thank you all for joining us today. Hannah, tell me, why are South Asians and other ethnic minorities more likely to be hospitalized and more likely to develop complications from COVID-19 infections? Thank you, and Yani Madhat Monero and Adil. So um, we know that this term BAME you may have heard about, Black, Asian and minority ethnic um, population are at higher risk of developing complications to, uh, due to COVID. And there are lots of studies at the moment about this, um, which are still ongoing, because as you can imagine, COVID is new and there's lots of information to be learned from it. And the studies are showing uh, initially that there is possibly a link with diabetes. Um, and those who develop or already have diabetes are at higher risk of developing more severe complications from COVID. We know that South Asian communities generally in the UK are six times more likely to have type two diabetes than the general population. And therefore it's important for us to be aware of that link, uh, of that possible link and, um, and manage it accordingly. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there are people with diabetes who will get COVID and have mild symptoms and be absolutely fine. If you do have diabetes and, and you do develop what you think are more severe complications or severe symptoms of COVID, it's really important that you speak to your GP or see a healthcare professional about it. And there's lots of information online, such as the Diabetes UK website, where you can find out more information. Munira, can you tell me a little bit about what diabetes is? Yes, um, Hanna and uh, Adil. Um, diabetes, you know, uh, as we know, it's um, when there is a high level of glucose in our blood and that condition we call is diabetes. And that usually happens when uh, our body doesn't make any insulin whatsoever. Or if it is making insulin, it's not enough or it's not being used properly. And there are many uh, uh, various types of diabetes. But in all of them, the main problem is there is a high level of glucose in the blood and that causes problems. And in, so in, in those conditions, people usually um, have symptoms like feeling tired all the time or um, feeling thirsty all the time and uh, maybe going, um, going to the toilet for wee quite often, even waking up at night uh, to go for a wee. There is a high risk of getting infections, so you may be getting uh, frequent infections or thrush as well. So um, I think the important, so these are the main symptoms of the diabetes. It doesn't matter whatever the type is. So if you do get any symptoms uh, like that, or if you think you are at risk of developing uh, diabetes, you should consult your GP or, or, your, um, or your diabetes nurse. Absolutely, thank you. And Hannah, why are we so concerned about diabetes? And what kind of damage does diabetes do to the body over the long term? So um, as Manira mentioned, diabetes is high sugar levels for a prolonged period of time in our body. And when we have those high sugar levels for long periods of time, it can damage and affect the little blood vessels in our body and even the nerves in our body. And that in, in the long term can cause damage to our vital organs. It's not something we can necessarily see or feel initially, which is why it's important to keep on top of diabetes before it becomes too late and it's already caused the damage. Some of the common ones that are heard about are, for example, affecting the little blood vessels behind the eyes. Um, and then that can affect your vision, which is why those with diabetes may already know they have a check of their eyes once a year. It can affect the nerves in the fingertips and the toes, and that can then affect your feeling and sensation. So then you're at risk of having cuts and ulcers, which can then become infected because you can't necessarily feel it. And the third one, which is most commonly known about, is your kidneys, which are, again, a vital organ to help get rid of any toxins in your blood when we wee out. 
and the blood vessels around the kidneys are affected by the high sugar levels and then your kidneys can't work as well as we would like them to. So all of those things are just a few of the main examples of why it's really important that we keep on top of the sugars early because if not, there are the long-term complications of them. Absolutely. And Munira, we know that COVID-19 cases in the UK are declining and that the NHS is preparing for a possible second peak. Tell me, over the next few months, what can people who are either diabetic or pre-diabetic do to reduce their risk of becoming seriously unwell with coronavirus? Yes, so, um, you know, there, there, are a lot, there are people that, who may be worried um, because they've got diabetes or they may have been told uh, they, they are at risk of developing diabetes. And especially in this unprecedented situation in this pandemic, uh, where their appointments for their routine diabetes checks or their reviews with their GPs may have been cancelled over the last few months. So they may be worried what's going on with their condition. So I would suggest is, um, you know, to keep an eye, very close eye on your symptoms. So if you do experience any unusual symptoms, so if you do get worried about uh, your eyes, or if you're worried about um, you are getting any symptoms of tiredness more than usual, or, uh, or frequency of wee, or if you're getting more infections or thrush, and you know you've got diabetes for a while, what symptoms you have been having when your blood sugars go high. So do contact, get in touch with your GP as soon as possible. And um, there may be people who have been told perhaps pre previously that uh, they, may, they may be at risk of developing or they may have pre-diabetes, you know, before the pandemic. So um, if they are concerned or if they experience any symptoms with their eyes, with their feet, um, all of these symptoms which we just mentioned earlier, then they should get in touch with their GPs or their diabetes nurses as soon as possible. And the other thing with uh, people with all types of diabetes, you know, the important thing is take your medications regularly, not to stop their medications without the clinician's advice. Make sure you eat a balanced diet and exercise regularly unless you've been advised differently by your clinicians. Thank you, Munira. And Hannah, tell me about the new diabetes support group that will be starting soon. Yes, so we're hoping to uh, launch a diabetes support group, which is essentially a platform or a network for um, the Jamaat who have got diabetes or at risk of diabetes to join and share their experiences um, and their um, any tips or tricks they have about diabetes that they've learned themselves that maybe they can share. But also there'll be an opportunity to have a confidential platform where you could speak to a healthcare professional if you wanted some advice um, or some more information. Um, and that will hopefully be launching soon and we'll keep you posted. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us, Munira and Hannah. And thank you to everyone watching. Please stay tuned for more information about the Diabetes Support Group. Yali Madad.